The focus of this video is to integrate rational functions. Now remember, a rational function is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And there are a lot of different situations that occur when you are looking at integrating rational functions. For some rational functions, it's just going to be a simple u substitution to integrate it. Other rational functions might require you to complete the square on the denominator and do a u substitution that possibly turns into an inverse tan as its indefinite integral. And then there's others, like some of the ones that we'll have here, that actually require us to do the method of partial fractions in order to integrate. Now, I've also posted a video that just deals with the method of partial fractions not embedded within an integral, and you can just click on this link in order to see that video. Here, we're going to look at integrating rational functions and how you determine which method you need to use. For our first one, we have the integral of 2x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x minus 8 dx. Now, when I'm looking at integrating a rational function, the very first thing I do is I can look to see if I have a monomial denominator. So is there just one term in the denominator or are there several terms? This one, I have several terms in the denominator. So it's not one that I can just break the fraction up, simplify those individual fractions, and then integrate term by term. The next thing I do is I compare the highest degree in the numerator with the highest degree in the denominator. So if the highest degree in the numerator here is one, so it's called a degree one polynomial. And then the highest degree in the denominator is a two, so that's called a degree two polynomial. When degree of numerator is the same or bigger than the degree of the denominator, then I need to do division of the polynomials before I do my integration. When it's a situation here where the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, then I won't do the division as a first step within it. Now, after I've compared the degrees of the numerator and the denominator, I first check to see if it's just a straight old u substitution where u might be the entire denominator expression. And we'll do that work over to the side. So what if we let u be, represent the entire denominator x squared minus 2x minus 8? And sometimes you'll pick a u and it's not the right thing for that problem and you just have to erase it and try to do something else. But here, when I look at my u choice of the denominator and then I figure the differential du is equal to 2x minus 2 dx, and recall to do this, my du is equal to, you take the derivative of the expression, so this will be x squared's derivative is 2x, and then minus 2x's derivative is negative 2, and the derivative of a constant term is 0, so that's where I get the 2x minus 2, and then times dx. So that's my differential. And when I look back and compare, I see that the integrand has the 2x minus 2 in the numerator of the fraction, and then the dx, I have a direct substitution that this entire 2x minus 2 dx will be taken out and will replace it with its equivalent du. And the x squared minus 2x minus 8 will be taken out and replace it with its equivalent u, and we have the integral of 1 over u du. So that u substitution of grabbing the entire denominator for this particular question panned out. It worked well. Just as a kind of um, look at this to see that this would be true, if I would have put the du in the numerator, it would have been the integral of du over u, which is the same thing as the integral of 1 over u du. So where I put the du either in the numerator or off to the side, um, doesn't matter, it's still the same expression. Just remember, if you put it over to the side, you need to go the one in the numerator and the u in the denominator. Now, this is the integral of u to the negative one du. And when I'm looking at integrating a letter base to a number power, 
If the number power wasn't negative one, I would add one to the exponent and divide by that. But if the exponent's negative one, like in this case, I can't add one to the exponent and divide by that because negative one plus one is zero and I can't divide by zero. That's kind of that aha situation where you're like, oh, that's right. That's the one that integrates back to the natural log of the absolute value of the expression. So the absolute value of u and then plus c, don't forget your constant plus c. So this gives me the natural log of the absolute value of what I said u was worth and u is worth x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then plus c. So that is one of the very beginning types of integrating of rational functions that you did at the very beginning of learning about u substitutions. Let's look at the next one. So the next one looks very similar to the one that we just finished up. It's the integral of, here it's 2x minus 26 over x squared minus 2x minus 8 dx. Now, if I were to grab the entire denominator here, it actually looks like the same denominator we had. Our d would be a 2x minus 2 dx, and I have 2x minus 26 dx. That constant term doesn't match. And so with this, I'm not going to be able to directly do that u substitution. The denominator is also factorable. I can factor x squared minus 2x minus 8. So when you have this degree of the top is smaller than the degree of the bottom, the entire u substitution didn't pan out, um, and it wasn't one that was going to lend itself to go to an inverse tan. Then you look at the denominator and you see if that is factorable. And if it's factorable, then you look at the method of partial fractions. So how does that work out here? Well, I want to try to break this integrand up as separate fractions that were added or subtracted that actually is equivalent to this overall fraction that I have difficulty integrating in the form that it's in right now. And with the method of partial fractions, you first look at the factorization of your denominator, x squared minus 2x minus 8 factors as x minus 4 times x plus 2. So if I set this up with fractions that have those separate factors as denominators, then when they would be built to get a common denominator, it would be back to the same denominator as in my original question. Now, what might the numerators be? Well, if your denominator is degree one, when I set it up with each of these denominators having one of these factors, then my numerator would be a degree less than what the degree of my denominator is. A degree less than degree one is degree zero, so just a constant. Now, I don't know what the numerator is, so I'm going to put a placeholder in for it. And I don't want it to get confused with the other letters that are in the problem, so I'm gonna use letters from the beginning of the alphabet to be my placeholders. And I'm just gonna start at the beginning of the alphabet and work down. So I'm gonna call this numerator A and the second numerator B. What we do after that is we go through the motions of building to get common denominators and then put the fraction together over the common denominator following exactly the same steps we would if we had a numerical numerator there with my denominators and I was um, actually carrying out the addition of the fractions. So this denominator has the x minus 4, it needs the x plus 2, so I'm going to build that top and bottom. The second denominator has the x plus 2, it's missing the x minus 4. Now, how do you add these fractions? You get rid of the parentheses in the numerator and collect like terms and keep it over the common denominator. So this will be ax plus 2a plus bx 
minus 4b and that's all over my x minus 4 times my x plus 2. Now once we have that we want to remember when I was doing the original question the variable the only variable in there was the variable x. So if I had numbers where a and b are x would be my variable that I would look for like terms in. So I want to collect like terms with the x variable and the appropriate powers of the x variable. So here I have an ax plus a bx, so that's ax plus bx, and then plus 2a doesn't have an x in it, and minus 4b doesn't have an x in it. And then when I, and other questions might even have other powers of x that you'd collect your like terms. So in the terms that have the same power on the x, factor that common factor of x out, but take it out the right side instead of out of the um, left side. So we're going to look at this as a plus b quantity times x plus my 2a minus 4b, and that's all over the x minus 4 times x plus 2. Now I look back to the original fraction, and if this is to truly be the same as the original fraction, which I want it to be, I don't want it to be a different expression, then whatever the coefficient in front of the x is in this numerator that I built with my a and b, I want to match the coefficient in front of the x in my original question so they're the same. So a plus b coefficient in front of the x has to be the same as the 2 coefficient in front of the x. So a plus b has to equal 2. And the constant term that doesn't have an x multiplied to it has to match the constant term up here. So my 2a minus 4b has to equal negative 26. Now, look that even though this said negative 26, I still use the plus between the terms, and then the minus part of that will work its way out when I find my value for a and b. So don't try to incorporate it too early. Always put your partial fraction set up together with pluses in between, and then the a and the b will come out to have the sign they're supposed to have. All right, now I want to solve this system of equations. This is a system of two equations with two unknowns, so I can solve this as if it were like x plus y equals 2 and 2x minus 4y equals negative 26. So you can solve it by substitution, by elimination, by addition, by Kramer's rule and determinants, by Gauss-Jordan elimination, a whole slew of different things that you can do to solve this. We're going to solve it by elimination by addition because it's nicely set up where the a's are stacked, the b's are stacked, and the numbers. So I want to multiply one or both of these equations by a number so that in front of one of the variables, the coefficients will be opposites, like 2 and negative 2, or 4 and negative 4, or 8 and negative 8. Okay, so when I look at this and I compare, I have two choices. Well, I have more than two choices, two obvious choices. I could multiply the top equation by negative 2, in which case I'd have a negative 2a in the top and a 2a in the bottom, which would get the a's to cancel. Or I could multiply the top equation by 4, because that would give me a 4b and a negative 4b, in which case the b's would remove. Either one will give you a, the same correct answer, I'm going to multiply both sides of this first equation by 4 to get the b's to cancel. So when we multiply the first equation by 4, both sides, I have 4a plus 4b is equal to 8. And I have my 2a minus 4b is equal to negative 26. And when I combine like terms here, add the equations, 4a plus 2a is 6a plus 4b minus 4b cancel, and then 8 plus a negative 26 will give me negative 18.
So now when I take this 6a is equal to negative 18, divide both sides by 6, a is equal to negative 3. And once I know a is equal to negative 3, I can come back to either one of the original equations, plug in that a is negative 3, and then solve for b. So if a is negative 3, negative 3 plus b is equal to 2. Add the 3 to both sides, I get b is equal to 5. So what that means then is way back up here with my original integral, this is exactly the same as integrating a is negative 3, a was over the x minus 4 factor. So negative 3 over x minus 4, and then plus b is 5, and b was over the x plus 2 factor. dx. So now when I integrate that, when I look at doing u substitutions for each of these, my denominator x minus 4 derivatives not different than 1. So actually I can pull this negative 3 out front. I have a negative 3 times the integral of 1 over x minus 4 dx and then pull the 5 out front of its own integral, 5 times the integral of 1 over x plus 2 dx. And then because what I would pick for my u's, derivative is 1, I really, then my du is going to be dx. So this will integra integrate back to the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 4. And then the second one also has a derivative that is 1, so its du would be equal to dx, and it will integrate back to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2. So our integration gives me negative 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 4, plus 5 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2, and then plus 